What's up, good people? Hey, hey, y'all. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. How's y'all doing? <laughs> Good morning, good morning, good morning, baby girl. <sighs> good morning. All right, y'all. Let me get my notes up in case you want us to slide on over there. Let's be ready and prepared. Good morning. All right. Let's get these notes up. How y'all doing? Everybody's good? Well, y'all came back. I've been like, Lord, the people is not coming back. After that, yesterday, it was just, you be, it be a lot. But you know what? Let me tell you something. I am so proud of each of you. Hear me now. The reason that I'm proud of you is because it takes a mature person. It takes a, ma a mature person to be able to hear a word, receive that word, morning baby girl, receive that word, and then Allow that word to do the work. It takes a mature person to do that. One thing that I am learning, so I, I, I haven't arrived yet, but one thing that I am learning about myself as I begin to do this work, as I begin to have these moments where I really, really press in to see, uh, to understand, to deal with, to, um, hey, Dante, what's up? Um, as I really press in, like for real, you know how we say, you know, I'm going to do this work. Lord, work on me. I need to do my work. No, half of the time that be this right here. It's just a bunch of mouth. Your lips are moving, but your heart ain't changing. Your mind is made up, so therefore there is going to be no fruit. But when you really get serious about your life, yours, right? You get serious about you. Come on, let's talk about this for a second. When you get serious about you, listen, as we would say from the country, bump everybody else. Look, bump you. Bump my ex. I know it's going to sound real hard, but bump my mama, bump my daddy, bump my molester, bump my rapist, bump the rejecter, bump the one that abandoned me, bump y'all, bump the job, bump the boss, bump the co-worker, bump all y'all that are trying to keep me back here, trying to keep me in my past, trying to remind me of my past. I Listen, your past is there to be an indicator of where you don't want to return. It is not a resting place. It is not a place where you camp out. It is not a place where you sit and you just say, oh, I, I, I've gotten so comfortable. I hate it here. But I've gotten comfortable here, so we're just going to deal with it. No, 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 boo-boo. When you get sick and tired of being sick and tired, you'll do something about it. That's why you, that, that's, 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 how, that's, that's how you lead people. That's when you cut them off. That's when you say enough is enough. You draw the line in the sand. You, 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 you put your boundaries up. But you got to get sick and tired. Of smelling your mess. You got to get sick and tired of living in your mess. 
yesterday, I, listen, I'm telling you, I had to go back and listen to that word myself again yesterday. It was a rich, it was a deep, it was a um, revealing word. It was a, um, it was a hard word. That was a hard word to swallow yesterday. You mean to tell me Jesus ain't going to come and just stop me from living how I'm living? No, ma'am. No, sir, he's not. But what he's going to do is he's going to give you the opportunity to be healed if you want to be. Let's pray. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, y'all. Let's pray. Father God, we, we lift you up this morning. We thank you. We honor you. Oh, we love you. We love you, Daddy. We love you. I mean, we don't like these whippings. We don't like facing the man or the woman in the mirror. We like being in control. Oh, that's so good, God. God, that's so good. God just said, you don't like being stuck, but you like being in control. So some of us, God of mine, some of us will choose control and comfort, hey God, over surrender and release. Jesus, today, today, God. Somebody say today and spell it T-U-D-A-Y-Y-Y-Y. Why, 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 why? <laughs> no, no, no. Let me let me try to say that again because that was fresh. That was fresh. Let me try to say that again. Sometimes we get to a place where we get so caught up in that place you know that mat come on we get so uh-huh it's a it, we don't like it uh -huh. but we stay there because it's comfortable i keep driving this car i know my car i'm just gonna say it okay don't get your feelings hurt it's okay if you do okay just try to get over it real quick okay so that you can hear what i'm gonna say because you can't hear if you're offended i'm gonna keep driving this raggedy car i know i need a new car but i'm gonna keep driving this old raggedy car guy because i don't have no car payments and my insurance is low and i like that it's comfortable for my pockets <laughs> Come on now. It's comfortable for my pockets. So because it's comfortable for my pockets, I'm, it's got air. I put gas in it and it take me from point A to point B. But what you're not understanding is that you constantly have to pour money into the car because you're constantly having to take it to the shop because the car is breaking down. Last week, your alternator went out. And then you got, you know, now they got to look at your brakes. And then a few more months passed. And now they're looking at, you know, your, your, your spark plugs. And now they, it's something always going on with the car. But you would rather remain in something that is comfortable and and the price is not as high so you think isn't that what we do in the spirit realm? we get comfortable being stuck uh -huh. yes god we get comfortable being stuck we don't like being stuck because you know you really don't like them you in relationship with them but you really don't like them Y'all used to jail. Now y'all like oil and water. 
Y'all used to be real close, but now every time you they come through the door and you rolling your eyes like, I'm so disgusted. And this ain't seasonal. This ain't a little season, y'all. No, this is life. You have, you have looked up and seen like, I don't know why I'm in this relationship with you. I really, I don't like you. <laughs> but you stay. You stay for different reasons. It could be because you don't want to be alone. It could be because you got bills and you, you know, they help with the bills or they take care of the bills or it could be, you know, for the children. Lord knows I've made that mistake. I stay for the children. You know, it could be, what's your, what's your excuse? What's your, what's your comfortable excuse as to why you're still holding on to this mat? Why you're still in this place that you hate? I'm tired of not getting out of bed. I don't, I'm, I just feel so depressed, but it's comfortable here because when you are depressed, at least you're the only person that you have to talk to. See, I don't have to talk to anybody else about it. I don't have to let anybody else in. I don't have to disclose my business to anybody else. It's just me. The problem with that is you the only one talking to you. And if you ain't got the strength like David to encourage your own self, to strengthen your own self in the Lord, then you going to be stuck and the enemy is going to tear your behind up. Why? Because he knows all I got to do is isolate them. All I got to do is keep them over. They, re they really don't want to get out. They say they do, but they don't really want to get out because they, they, they've they gotten comfortable in this place, even though they don't like, what an oxymoron that is, right? Isn't that like insanity? Like you're saying, I'm sick of this place, but you won't get out of this place. And God was saying to us on yesterday as he's saying again on today i am not going to change your situation you are didn't that make you feel some type of way didn't that make you feel some type of way god give me the words today Give me exactly what you want me to say. Let this be none of me, but all of you, God. Give me exactly what we need to hear on today. Use my mouth. Use my vocal cords. I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be acceptable in your sight, Lord. You are my strength and you are my redeemer. Now teach us today. Deliver us today. Set us free on today. Help us today, God, that we may walk a different walk. That we won't just keep talking this thing, but we'll walk this thing down. So we're sick and tired of being in a place of comfort. We're sick and tired of being in a place where we know we need to get out, but yet we don't want to take the steps that we need to get out. God help us today. Help us today to stop this mess. Stop it. Somebody needs to tell you, you need to stop this mess. You need to stop. You're killing your shape. It ain't them, it's you. Now, I, I, listen, now, listen, now, let, let me just say this right here. Let me preface this thing real quick. Let me preface this thing. I, I, I really, <laughs> the whole morning I've been praying, God, I've been praying this for a couple, couple weeks now. God, can we just be nice? <laughs> can we just be nice? Can we just not, like, can we be nice, please? God said, nice is why they are where they are. Nice is why your behind is where you are. It's not time to be nice. When they was in that temple, stealing and cheating people and, 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 and getting on all people, Jesus came up in that piece. He was like, absolutely not. I'm sick of this right here. What you're not going to do. And he's saying, Lord, you don't want me to say that, do you? I believe God is saying to us, I'm sick of you praying to me about something that I've given you the strength to do yourself. I'm sick of you coming to me, asking me to move this person. I'm sick of you asking me, God, let them, he need to get right. 
I'm sick of you coming to me about the kids. I'm sick of you coming to me about the job, the job that you prayed for that I blessed you with. I'm sick of you coming to me about the job because you are stubborn and you don't want to do what you have been assigned to do. You think you know it all. You think, you know, I don't need them. They need me. No, boo. You need them because you need them to help you grow up. See, that's, let me tell you something. I hear that. Listen, some of us are in these relationships and in these relationships, what we're saying is, oh no, you listen, we don't want nothing hard. God is saying the reason why you are stuck is because you don't want to do the work that is needed to get out of that place. You have gotten comfortable in misery. I said, you have gotten comfortable in misery and you mad at the world when you really should be mad at yourself. How are you going to be mad at somebody else that didn't listen? They might have led you there. They might have led you there. They might be the reason you got there. But you're the reason that you stay in there. Boo-boo, you're the reason that you're there. He told us yesterday, stop blaming everybody else, everything else for what you will not do. What is it that you won't do? To free yourself from this cage. I'm telling you, I'm blown away about this man at the pool. I'm blown away about the revelation that God has given me about this man at the pool. You know why I'm blown away about it? I'm blown away about it because I see myself. <laughs> I'm telling you, for, for years I have looked at these. I have looked at these stories, these parables, these things, these little stories in the Bible, and these was these people back then. I didn't really look at these people as people. Me, J. Cena. I never, like I just didn't. I mean, they were just stories. <laughs> Until God said, no, I need you to look a little deeper. I need you to come a little closer. Uh-huh. Because see, sometimes we get so... Mm. Arrogant. We think, oh, that's her. Oh, that that's for her. That's not for me. You ever been to church? <laughs> yes, God, that's good. You ever been to church? You ever been to church and the preacher was preaching and you could not even receive what the preacher was saying? Because the whole time, especially if they was with you, you was looking at the other person or wanting to add, you know, the other person saying, that's for you. Or you or you kept saying, I can't wait to get home and play this for my husband or play this for my wife or play this for my so-and-so because they need to hear this word. Or you ever been in the house with your with your spouse, with your children, with whoever, and you started you started turning the thing up like they started talking about your situation. You was like, oh, this has got to be God. Yes. And you turned the, you know, you turned it up. You turned it up for them. And God said, you just missed the whole word. You just missed the whole word. You know how you just missed the whole word? You just missed the whole word, boo-boo, because you over here, mm-hmm. Get us today, God. Get us right. Yeah, you over here trying to turn the word up for them, but you really need to be turning the word up for yourself. How many times have you dismissed the word because you thought you was too good for that word? Or, oh, that's not me. That's not me. I'm sorry. That's not me. She must be talking about somebody else because I'm definitely not the man in the pool. Really? None of this that we have been talking about the last few days, you don't see yourself in none of it? Really? Hmm. I find that hard to believe. Have you really looked at it? Have you taken off your 
to really look at how once you to it okay let me just say this the word is not going to change because you can't see yourself the word does not change because we don't think it's for us the word is going to remain the same whether you receive it or not god does not change his mind <laughs> although and i said this before although he's always changing he's still the same he never changes he said, my word is the only thing on the earth that will never fade away. It will not. Listen, he said, my word will remain. When this whole world passes away, it's going to be my word that will never. It will never. My word will always be here. <laughs> He is not playing. The man at the pool of Bethesda was a man that had an issue. He had an issue. And Jesus came to talk to him about his issue. This is another revelation that the Holy Spirit gave me while I was studying. <clears throat> last night and this morning he said Jay when it's your time it's your time this is why you can't be worried about those that get in the pool before you you can't be worried about those that get healed before you those that get married before you those that get the blessing before you don't you can't worry about that get your mind off of them stay focused stay focused stay focused see that's what that's what the problem was the man was focused on the pool which was um it, it was something else that he was looking to and looking for to be what only god could be right so he was looking at the pool for his healing and jesus came on the scene and said that pool can't do that for you boo bruh son sir ma'am daughter girl that pool can't do that for you i can't so since you've been sitting here with this problem, since you, you know, been walking around with this unforgiveness for 38 years, since you've been walking around, you know, with this bitterness for 38 years, since you've been walking around um, depressed for 38 years, since you've been walking around with this, uh, this bad temper for 38 years, you've been walking around gossiping for 38 years, you've been walking around fornicating for 38 years. Oh, I almost said something really, really bad. Oh, I just saw a man. I just saw a man. He said, since you've been walking walking around and you just want to pop your penis in anybody that open up i'm talking to you you've been doing that for 38 years sir i'm so sick of you just around here laying around with anybody because you can instead of wondering why you ain't wor worked on you sir it's you you are the problem it is you you are the one that needs to be fixed it is you sir it is you it is you because if you change then she could be made whole but she can't be made whole because she trying to please you sir i don't know who that was for but you can take it or leave it it's already out so you've heard it so you deal with it how you want it moving right along you have got to understand that god is not here to play with you when we look at the other parables when we look at these other little bible stories since that's what we want to call them when we look at them right we look at how jesus came and then jesus spoke to the person and said listen stretch out your arm you know if you got a problem let me take that out let me fix your eyes let me do this uh-uh this man, he said, no, 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 I'm not doing anything. As a matter of fact, I'm sick and tired of you complaining about what you're complaining about. It is time to stop the complaining. It is time to stop with the excuses. It is time to stop the blaming. It is time for you to stop this young foolishness. And it's time for you to do this work that only you can do. That, listen, he says, I will give you strength. I will, when you are weak, I am strong. When you, ma'am, sir, when you are weak, God says, 
I will be your strength. I will be strong in and through you. This is why it says I can do all things through Christ who what? Strengthens me. The only way you're going to receive the strength that you need is when you do what you need to do. When are you going to pick up your mat? Because you heard what Jesus said. Get up. That's the first thing he said. Get up out of this place. You know what place you in. Get up. Even before he asked, before he gave the, the, the man what to do, he asked him, you want to be made well? <laughs> do you want to be made well? Or do you want to just sit here and keep telling me about these problems? Do you want to be made well? Or do you want to keep calling up people, telling them, about your problems. How long you gonna keep talking about this? How long? Oh God, that's good. How long are you gonna keep replaying this scenario, this season of your life, this moment in your mind? You gonna keep replaying this over and over and over again? Why are you doing that? When I have given you power, why are you doing that? Do you even want to be here? Or is it more comfortable for you to remain in this dark place, unhealed, in bondage, in chains? You like it then? Comfort will cause you not only to lose yourself, but to miss God. What? The man. When Jesus came, remember, we, we mentioned this yesterday. When Jesus came to see the man, man ain't even know who Jesus was. He had gotten so comfortable. where he was he had gotten so comfortable with who he was what ailed him with his sickness he had gotten so comfortable with the diagnosis he had gotten so comfortable to people telling him who he wasn't going to be. <laughs> he had gotten so comfortable. In that place. That it was easier. Ooh, it was easier. To deal with the demons that he had. Because he at least recognized them. Woo! Mm, 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 mm. Come on, God. Talk to me. Yeah, hey, God. It was easier for him to deal with them demons he had because at least he knew what they were. At least he knew how to deal with them. At least he knew them. He was familiar with that shit. He was familiar with them. But to do the work for healing, to do the work to be delivered, to do the work to be set free. It's going to cost you something. Shot. It's going to cost you. It's going to cost you a yes and a no. Ah! Yes, God. It's going to cost you. It's going to cost you a yes and it's going to cost you a no. It's going to cost to be healed. It's a cost to be set free. It's a cost to be delivered. It don't come for free, boo. Because what? Yes, sir. Once you are delivered, you got to stay. Y'all don't want it. Y'all don't want it. Y'all don't want it. Mm -mm. You don't, because you comfortable, boo. Well, you go ahead and stay comfortable. As for JC to my Lisa, we trying to be free up in this piece. As for JC to my Lisa, we are ready to be healed and set free. We are ready to be loose to these shackles. We are ready to deal with these demons. As for JC to my Lisa, it's a new day. It's a new season. It's a new time. I'm 
sick and tired of allowing the enemy to keep me in a place where God said, you got the key. You got it. I've given you the key to your deliverance. Jesus, I'm telling you now, right now, I'm telling you this is, <laughs> yes, sir. I've given you the key to your deliverance. All you got to do is put the key in the lock and turn it. Put the key in the door. Turn the key. God is saying this morning, I am not going to do for you what I have given you the authority to do for yourself. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I need to fast forward real quick and then we'll back it up real fast. I need to fast forward real quick and then we'll back it up real fast. The next thing he told that go go with me go with me John five John five come on come on let's go let's go let's go John five I'm on I'm gonna go forward real quick and then we're gonna back up come on go 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 seven he said the sick man answered sir there's no way I can go I can get healed for I have no one to lower me into the water when the angel comes as soon as I try to crawl to the edge of the pool someone else jumps in ahead of me then he says Jesus said to him stand up get up boy get yourself up now don't just get up. Don't just recognize where you are. Don't just admit that I'm a mess. Don't just admit no one ain't him is really me. Don't, 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 don't just ignore. No, no, no. No more ignoring who you are. This is about you. This ain't about nobody else. This is about you. This is about you. We're going to take the blame off of somebody else. This is about you. This is about you. This is about you. Okay. He said, now pick up your mat. You pick that up yourself. You pick up your bad temper. You pick up your little nasty mouth. You pick up your little horny self. You pick yourself up. You pick up your bad attitude. You pick up your laziness. You pick up your stubbornness, your pride, your arrogance. You pick up your mouth that loves to go gossip. Close it. Your little sedated self. Pick it up. Acknowledge it. Claim it. Deal with it. Look at it. Admit it. And walk. In this version, it says, pick up your sleeping mat and you will walk. He said, once you can, I said, once you admit that you have an issue, because some of us take this little, you know, faith confession thing too far. I oh, know I'm not going to admit I'm sick. You sick. That's a fact. You're sick. The truth is, Jesus came for your sickness. So by his stripes, you are healed. But you are sick. How are you going to be well if you can't acknowledge you're sick? I'm just asking for you. <laughs> I ain't asking for myself because I see you sick. I'm asking for you because you the one need to you the one need to come clean, come real. Come, listen. Let's keep going because y'all not with it today. Anyway, now Jesus worked this miracle on the Sabbath. It said, once he told the man, okay, immediately he stood up and he was healed. Once the man gave Jesus the, the uh, Jesus gave the man the direction like, sir, you need to get yourself up from there and acknowledge what you got going on. Then you need to take up your mat, pick it up. Stop putting it down. No, pick it up, look at it, admit it, and let's do something about it. What are you going to do? You're going to walk. That means you got to do some work. You got to put some faith to your, 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 your issue. Put some faith to that talking you've been doing all this year. I want to get in the water. I want to be healed. I want my marriage to work. I want my to restore my relationship with my children, with my mother. I want, I want. God said, no, you don't. Because when you want something, you go out there and get it. You did that when you wanted that car, didn't you? You saved them coins to buy that house, didn't you? They got on your nerves, had you checking this, checking this, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. You obeyed everything that they said because you wanted that house. Look what you did to get your job. 
you went back to school and you got a higher degree because you wanted a promotion on your job. Don't tell me that you what you don't tell me what you won't do for what you want. You wanted some things. Uh-huh. You wanted that woman. You wanted that man. Uh-huh. So you did what you needed to do to get them. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. You know, you know, you know how this work. Yeah. You know how this work. You save some coins for what you want. You will do what you need to do. Some of you have worked two, three jobs to make sure that you was taken care of. Your family was taken care of. And you mean to tell me you will not do the same? You won't work two, three jobs to be healed? You won't read your word for two, three hours for you could be delivered? You mean to tell me you won't do the work that's necessary? You won't do the work that's necessary in the spirit to, to be delivered and set free, which is which spills over to every area of your life, but you will do it for these little areas. You will do it for this little material stuff that's going to pass away, but your soul is at stake. You mean to tell me that you will sacrifice for worldly things, but you won't sacrifice for spiritual things when the spiritual things are going to be the things that are going to outlast any worldly thing, any earthly thing that you can ever partake of, that you can ever receive. You mean to tell me that you are not concerned about your spiritual soul, that you are not concerned about where you're going to live after this life because there is another life you mean to tell me that you're gonna spend all your life the bible says what 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 what, what, what what's it gonna do for a man if he gained the whole world and lose his soul that's what he's talking about today this is why he's telling you to pick a shandy this is why he's telling us you got to pick up that get your behind get up no i can't come in to you i can't come to you and be like get up get up get up some of y'all yeah no 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 no. you're not gonna hear that because you ain't heard him he's been telling you that for 38 years get up get up come on get up get up come on baby get up you could do it get up. no no get your behind up some of you need a jerking some of you need a jolting some of you got need to snatch your tail up before you get yourself up he's not gonna play with you anymore your soul is on the line people's lives is on the line you got purpose in you and as long as you sit as long as you over here bound, as long as you over here not being delivered, as long as you over here walking in chains, as long as you over here in bondage, you cannot go out and do what God has called you to do effectively. You cannot do what he's called you to do. He did not give you this breath to breathe. He did not allow you to get over COVID. He did not allow you to get over cancer. He did not allow you to get over what you have been dealing with and to just walk around here collecting things on earth. Are you serious right now? You don't need another diamond. You don't need another person. You don't need another pair of shoes. You don't even need another car. You don't need another nothing. You need to turn your focus from this worldly stuff. You need to turn your focus on you. You are what he wants. You are who he's coming after. You are who he's serious about. You. It's you. Do you understand that he walked over, went around, crossed all these people and said it was thousands of people out there. Sick, lame, crippled, paralyzed. They were out there. Thousands of them. This man wasn't the only one there, like the woman at the well. No, 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 no. He had an appointment with that woman at the well, but he went looking for this man, and that's what he's doing with you today. If you can stop getting offended, stop getting your panties all in the water and your boxes all up your butt, sir. If you could just sit here and really receive it, really listen to the heart of the message. Listen to what he said. He said, I'm looking for you. I'm I'm seeking you out. I'm coming. I'm supposed to be over here at the feast, but I'm coming over here to you. Why? Because I'm looking for you. I want you to know how important you are, Jesus. I want you to yes, yes, God. I want you to know how important you are. I want you to know how much I love you. I want you to know how much I want you to be held, healed. I want you to be delivered. I know I want you to be set free. I want you to know how much I love you. I love you. I love you, daughter. I love you, son. I'm tired of seeing you in this state. I'm tired of seeing you like this. I've given you authority. I said when I I leave. I'm going to leave you with something. I'm going to leave you with the Holy Spirit and he's going to help you. He is your helper. I know you can't do it by yourself, but you have a helper. You have somebody that lives, rest, rules on the inside of you and he will help you. He will help you when you can't help yourself. All you got to do is call on him. All you got to do is say, Father, I need you. Father, I stretch my hands to thee. I, I stretch my hands to thee. I stretch my hands. Yeah, God. I stretch my hands to thee. I can't call nobody else. There's no other help I know. If you would
withdraw yourself from me, whether shall I go? God, I need you today. I need you to speak to me. I need you to help me with this problem. I got a problem. I know I got a problem. I got an issue. And only you can do it. Only you can hear me. Only you can save me. Only you can set me free. Rashe, Sunday. Only you can do it. God, I done tried it by myself. I done tried to stop. I done tried to stop. I done tried to break away. I done tried it, God. But if you come on the scene, yes, sir. If you come on the scene and you help me, God, I know I'll get out of it. But if I try to do it by myself, see, all he needed was to recognize who Jesus was. And God has said to you, I need you to recognize that I'm in the room. I need you to recognize that I'm talking to this little brown skinned girl with this red hair. I'm talking through her to you. I sent her to be bold and courageous. Yes, God. I sent her. She don't want to do it. Sometimes because she want to patty cake with you. She want to patty cake when she's really got to throw blows at you. <laughs> yeah. But I made her strong and courageous so that she can come and tell you what I got to say. I've been trying to tell you. I I've been trying to get your attention, but you just ignore me. I, 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 I know it's strong. I know it's tight, but it's right. I know it's a lot. I know it's a lot. But what I'm trying to get you to understand is your soul is at stake. The enemy wants to shift you as we. He is searching and he is looking for whom he may devour. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. He don't want to just hurt your feelings, boo-boo. No, 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 no. He wants to kill you. He wants to annihilate you. He wants to take you out. And you think I'm going to care about your feelings? You think I'm going to care about stepping on your little feet? You think I really care about making you feel a little something-something? You going to get in your feelings? Oh, really? You going to get offended because I'm trying to come and help you? Really? That's what you going to do? I told you that when you was a child, you act like a child. But now that you are a man, you are a man, right? Now that you are a woman, you are a woman, right? You know how when people try to come for you, be like, oh, you must not know that I'm grown. I'm a grown, full grown woman. Well, act like it then. Pick up your bed and walk. Pick it up. Pick up your bed. Pick up your own bed. <laughs> he didn't say go pick up their bed. Because they got an issue. It's yours. Pick up your bed. Pick up your bed. God says, I, I'm bringing you this word because I don't want you to go to hell. Because see, what's going to happen is there are going to be many people. There are going to be many that are going to come. And they're going to think they're, they're going to they're be with me eternally, and they're not. Because they want to read my word, but live like hell. They want to read my word and do what they want. You want to straddle the fence. <clears throat> and what I'm telling you, if you don't deal with these issues, these issues are going to deal with you. It's, it's, it's no way else to say it. I know you've been dealing with this a long time. Some of this stuff, listen, it ain't your fault. Some of this stuff is generational. Some of this stuff people did to you. They did. And you have a right to. Yes, yes, yes. You have a right to be angry. You have a right to be mad. You have a right to feel the way that you feel. But what you don't have the right to do, unfortunately, and I know this is going to sound really, really hard. I know it is. But you don't have a right to stay there. I didn't make you to be beneath I've already told you who you are. Me telling you to pick up your bed is me telling you that you have the strength within you to do what you need to do. The question is, will you get up? And you can't just get up today. That's it. So this is where I was going. This is where I was going before he let loose. This is where I was going. 
Come on back over here. This is where I was going. When the Jewish leaders came, so once he told the man to pick up his bed, immediately he stood up and he was healed. So the man said, you know what? I need this. So I'm going to stand up. <laughs> I I'm going to own my issues. How can we say we want God? And then when God speaks, we ignore him. Jesus. I, I just, can we talk about it for a minute? Come on, y'all. Seriously. How can we keep saying, Lord, I want you? But when he shows up, when he tells us what to do, we choose our own way. At some point, sis, ma'am, sir, you're going to have to die. You're going to have to die to yourself. You're going to have to die to your way. You're going to have to surrender. You're going to have to stop looking at everybody else and focus on you. Your relationships will thrive when you focus on you. When you do the work, when you get up, and pick up your bed. When you do it for you. When you make this thing about you. And you settle in and you trust God. I'm telling you. This is when you're going to be healed. That's when you're going to be delivered. That's when you're going to get set free. But you're not going to get set free if you can't even admit. You won't even admit where you are. And that, yes, they may have led me here. They may be the reason that I'm here. But I'm not going to let them be the reason that I stay. I'm not going to allow this thing to keep me here. Yes, this addiction. Yes, I may be struggling with this. Yes, I got an issue with this. But I refuse to let it keep me here another 38 years. There are people. Waiting on you. You may have to struggle. Listen. You may have to pick up your mat a few times. <laughs> before you really receive the deliverance that you need. I'm reminded of the person in the Bible. Where Jesus told him you got to dip in that. You got to dip in that dirty water seven times. That prophet told that man. That man was. He was in his feelings living. What? Out of all of the ways you could tell me to be healed, out of all of the words that the, you could give me that the Father gave you, and you're going to tell me that I got to go dip in some dirty, nasty water? Isn't it amazing that we want a word from the Lord, but when we get that word, sometimes that word does not come the way we think it's going to come. We have the nerve to be offended at the messenger. We have a nerve, the nerve of us to be, that's so good, God. You are going to be offended by the messenger with the messenger because they gave you a word of the Lord that is going to heal you, that is going to change your life, and you weren't about being offended because of what they told you, how they, well, you was yelling when you gave that word, well, how you got to yell at people. It's not yelling, it's called passion, and it's passion because I'm trying to help you stay out of hell, boo. I'm trying to help me stay out of hell, and guess what? Sometimes your mama had to holler because when she 
she was trying to tell you not to touch that, you didn't hear her when she said it softly. So she had to scream and the scream jolted you. The scream made you jerk. It scared you. And then you paid attention. Sometimes God sends a word that it don't suit our fancy. Yeah. It don't suit the way we want. You don't say it the right way. Sometimes it needs to be said just how it was said so that you can get just what you need to get. He's trying to save our soul. And you worrying about the delivery and the deliverer. You're worrying about what was said? Are you serious right now? Are you serious right now? That's a tall tale sign that you're not ready to be healed. Because let me tell you something. When Jesus said to that man, get up, number one. Number two, pick up your mat. He didn't say your husband mat. He didn't say the job, Matt. He said, pick up your mat. And walk. He didn't say run around the church seven times. He didn't say to go to revive and get a prophetic word. No, this is your prophetic word, boo. You've you been looking for a prophetic word? Here it is. The prophetic word for you is very simple. Listen, told you, Jesus ain't talking tongues. Jesus ain't getting no oil. Jesus ain't pray over no oil, get no oil, and oil the man. Jesus ain't knock the man down. Jesus ain't do none of that. Jesus simply spoke a word. And that man had a choice to hear and receive or block it and leave. The brother had a choice. And I'm saying to you today, Are you going to hear this word and receive it? Or are you going to block it and leave it? And stay in the same position that you were in? Fast forward. I was trying to get there, but listen. I have to stop when he says stop. He said immediately that he stood up and he was here. Immediately that man received that word. Immediately. Jesus said, boom, boom, boom. Let's make this real click, clear and real, real quick, sir. You need to do this, this, and this. And that man reacted. He reacted because he received that word that had been spoken. He ain't get offended. You, why you won't help me? The man didn't do all that. Why you won't help me? I just told you that every time I try to get into the pool, I just told you that every time I try to be healed of depression, every time something, something causes me to go back in, I have another storm. I have another situation. It's like I just can't get out of it. Every time I try not to cuss my husband out, he do something else that makes me go, no, 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 no. It's something in you that needs to be fix is something in you that you've got to deal with it's in you listen all the listen the enemy is going to come people are going to be people boo things are going to happen it happens to all of us that man had to make up his mind that he was not going to allow it to do it to him again. I Listen, I had to make up my mind the last time that I committed fornication, it was not good to me. I enjoyed the act, but I was, I was crying at the same time. Conviction was too great this time.
didn't feel good. And I said that day, I can't do this. I can't keep choosing to hold on to this mat. I'm saying I want to release the mat. But when the temptation comes, when the issue rises, when the sickness reveals itself, I want to say, God, help me, but I don't want to help myself. <laughs> wow. God says some miracles, some deliverances. Yes, God, this victory. You will only receive victory in this area when you do something about it. You've got to make the choice. You've got to say no. You've got to say, I'm not doing this. You, you got to come to the end of yourself. You've got to recognize your weakness and your strength all at the same time. You got to deal with you. They will use you as long as you allow. When are you going to stand up for you? When are you going to love you enough? When are you going to deal with these demons? When are you going to stop saying, it's a generational curse, I've dealt with this all my life. When are we going to stop that? It may be generational, but it can stop with you if you really want it to. Do you? Yeah, I just, I, 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 you know, I just was raised not to take no jump from nobody. Hmm. Well, now you're grown. You have resources. You have tools. You have a plethora of things available to you to help you be better. Will you pick up your mat? Because I'm telling you, every day, you're going to have to choose life. Every day. If you do not live intentionally, if you don't put God first, if you don't make the word final authority in your life, if you don't make your relationship with God intentional, see, when you do those things, he gives you the strength to do the thing that you couldn't do. Notice, he's not going to physically stop you. He is not going to get in the bed with you and close your legs. Sir, he is not going to pull your pants back up. Ma'am, he is not going to stop you from buying whatever you're going out there buying, trying to soothe yourself because that's what you're really doing. He's not going to stop you from picking up the phone to gossip. He's not going to stop you from harboring unforgiveness. When we take the step that we need to pick up our mat, what we're saying, God, is, God, this hurts, but I desire your way 
your will, your plan for my life. I desire you more than I desire any of this. Even if I've gotten comfortable in my pain, I choose. I would rather choose to sacrifice and go through the pain that's needed to do the work so that I can be healed, delivered, and set free. Do you realize it's work for you to hold on to that man? It takes work. It takes work to live in fear. It takes work to live in comfort. It really does. Because you're doing something. It's just the something that you don't want to do. I had to make up my mind. I got to stop all con. I got to cut off all contact. I've got to save me from me. Sometimes, I've heard this in a song before. Sometimes the enemy is the inner me. The E-N-E-M-Y is really the I-N-N-E-R-M-E. The enemy is really the inner me. I'm really the one that's doing the damage. I keep prolonging it. <clears throat> I keep prolonging it. So are you going to keep praying for 38 years, 38 more years that for the water to be stirred. You're going to keep praying? Or are you ready to do something about it? Are you sick and tired of sitting by the pool waiting for the water to be stirred? Waiting for your husband to get right? Waiting for the children to get right? Waiting for somebody to come and apologize to you when God said, just forgive them. Forgiveness is not for them. It's for you. You got to release that bitterness. You got to release that shame. You got to release the guilt. It wasn't your fault. I know it happened to you, but it wasn't your fault. You didn't even see it coming. I'm so sorry you had to go through what you went through. I'm so sorry. We've all gone through something. I'm so sorry. We can't change it. But we have the ability. We cannot change our past. But we have the ability to change our present so that we can have a different future. Come on. Get up. For your children's sake, get up. For your grandchildren's sake, get up. For your marriage, get up. Ah, get up for your relationship, get up. For you. If you don't do it for nobody else, get up for you. You are important. You are. That's why he came. That's why he came. He said, it's your season. It's your time. You've been praying. It's your season.
don't dwell no more on how long it's been. That's where the enemy he wants you to stay focused on the on the minors. Don't worry about it. Yep, you made a mistake. Yep. You made the wrong call. Yep. That was a bad decision. Yep. You messed up. Yep. It happened to you. Yep. Yep. All of it. Yep. 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 What I love about God is that even when life happens to us, He's there. That's what he's doing. He said, I am here to wipe away those tears. You can't do it without me. But if you're ready to take the step necessary, I'll give you the strength to do it. But I need you, I need to remind you that this thing. You're going to have to choose me over it every day. Sometimes, several times a day. But every time you choose me, you're going to get stronger, stronger, stronger. You're going to get wiser. You're going to get better. You're going to get, you're going to be more fruitful. You're going to start thriving. You're really going to start living. But you got to acknowledge it. Accept it. Deal with it. And let it go. Are you ready? He's waiting. For this, for this deliverance, he's waiting for you to make the first step. You've got to do it. You've got to put action to your faith. He's been teaching us all year. You can't just talk the talk. I want, I want to, I want to get in the water. Olivia you've Cable, got to not to only office. talk the talk, Cable, you've got to now walk it. I've been saying this. Months. Since last year, it's time to do the work. If you want to be healed, you've got to do the work. Are you ready to work? Your mat is whatever has been your comfort zone. Your mat is whatever is making your present bad situation comfortable. Your mat is whatever you've been using as an excuse for not walking in victory. Your mat is whatever has kept you chained in mediocrity. Your mat is whatever symbolizes your handicap, your guilt, your shame, your fear. Is that abandonment? Is, is, is that, that spirit of rejection? And today, God is speaking to someone this morning and he's saying to you, the time has come for you to pick up your mat. 
and walk. Out of all the people, it's the 18 of you that I have chosen today to deliver this word to so that you can pick up your bed. You've been asking me, God, when, when, when today? God, when today? Today. And if you take this word seriously, I promise you, God is going to come through for you. You will not be shackled anymore. You will not be in bondage anymore. You will come up out of depression. You will come up out of uh, bitterness and, and unforgiveness. You will be free today if you heed these words. You're mad. It's time to pick up your mat. It's time to stop wallowing in self-pity. But it's time to get up and do something with your life. It's time to fight back. It's time to let the enemy know you may have won the battle, but God's going to help me win this war. Yep. You might have had me down. You might have had me over here feeling like I was rejected, overlooked, forgotten, abandoned. Yep, I might have been this. I might. They might have did that to me. Yes, yes, it all happened, all of it. And there's nothing that I can do about what they did to me, but there is something about what I keep doing to myself. I refuse to stay here. Eat. He's saying to you today, I am sending Jacena to remind you that you have more in you than you even realize. I am sending my daughter to remind you that greater is he, I, God, that's in you than he that is in the world. It don't matter who is against you as long as I am with you. I've come to remind you. That is time to manifest the greatness of God that's in you. It's not. It's 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 time for you to see how great you are. You gotta see it. You gotta see it. It's time for you to see it. I know what they told you. I know what they called you. I know they told you we're going to never amount to nothing. I know your ex-husband, your boyfriend, your wife, your, your girl. I know your grandmama, them, they spoke to you, your teacher. Somebody told you that you wasn't going to be nothing. You was going to be just like your daddy, just like your mama. I know you might have been a... They called you a crackhead. Yep, they called you an alcoholic. Yep, they called you a hoe. Yep, they called you all kind of names. Yep, yep, I know you're grieving. You're going through it and you're feeling like, God, I don't know if I'm going to make it. I know, I know, I know, I know. I know. I know your heart has been broken. I know you feel like, what do I have to live for? Hey, Cena, you don't know what I'm going through. Nope, I don't. But I know who does. And in spite of that, he still calls you great. He still calls you his beloved. He still calls you worthy. God is saying to you today, you can be all that you want to be and all that I've called you to be. But you're going to have to go in the strength that I have given you. Everything that you need to do what needs to be done, it's on the inside of you. You don't have to go look for it anywhere. You don't have to get to the pool and get in the pool in order to be healed. It's in you. It's in you. It's in you. He sent me to remind you this morning that there is nothing that shall be impossible to those that believe. <laughs> you hear that? Nothing is going to be impossible to you because you believe. And if you believe, 
the time has come for you not only to tackle that mountain, but for you to move it. God says you will be able to speak to the mountain and the mountain will be removed. You, not me. I'm not going to speak to it. You speak to it. I told you that whatsoever you bound on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. What you're binding and loosing, you got to do. He sent me to remind you that you have got to exercise the power of the kingdom of God that is inside of you. It's not a matter of talk. Can't keep talking about this. You got to use your power. You got to do something. Power is not exhibited until something is done with it. What you gonna do with the power he's given you? What are you gonna do? It's totally up to you. And lastly, he said, the whole creation, the whole world is waiting eagerly. They are anticipating, they are expecting a manifestation of God in you. Listen, y'all, whether we believe it or not, the world is waiting for us. The world is waiting, they're waiting. The world is saying, when are they going to stand up? When, when are they going to rise up and be who they say they are? They're waiting on us. Get up. Pick up your mat and walk in authority. You have authority over sickness. You have authority over bitterness. You have authority over unforgiveness. You have authority over fornication. You have, an, you have authority over adultery. You have authority over gossip. You have authority over strife and division. You have authority. Use your authority. Everything that you need. It lives on the inside of you. What are you going to do about it? God, I pray I pray that I've said what you wanted me to say. I pray that this world will not fall on deaf ears. But I pray that those that you will send to watch this video, that they will receive what you have spoken. That they will understand that some miracles are not given to us. Some miracles, we actually have to do something in order to receive. Some of us have been dealing with these issues for 38 years. At least it seems like it. We've allowed the enemy to Keep us from walking in authority and victory. We've allowed it. Because we've gotten comfortable laying by the pool, waiting on someone else Jesus, to give us and to do for us what we could do for ourselves. We repent today. We ask for your forgiveness. And we ask that you would strengthen us to do what we need to do. Strengthen us for the days ahead.
because we have to constantly and intentionally, consistently and committedly choose you every day. When we want to fall back in bitterness, when we want to fall back Give us the strength to stand. In Jesus' name. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and give you his peace. May he be gracious to you. I pray according to Psalms 91 that the Lord will keep, preserve, protect, cover you and your family. And I pray that he will really get his word. Pray that you will understand today how very much you are loved, how very much you are needed. We need you. We need you. We need you to get well. Because when you get well, you start to walk in what you're called to do. And as a result, lives are affected, impacted, and changed as a result. God, that first has to happen with you. I pray that goodness, grace, and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. In Jesus' name. Amen. I love you guys. Have an amazing day. I'll see you tomorrow. 7.15-ish to 8.30-ish. All right. I love y'all. Have a great day. Okay. God loves you. Bye-bye.